Right, so this is uh, a talk a bit more uh, experimental on the experimental side. So of the what we are doing on uh, the power exclusion principle uh, with with the not the, the email is correct. So if you now it's, now it's correct. <laughs> so don't worry, everything is fine. Um, right. So uh, and also some some very I will also show some very uh, re very very recent uh, results. Uh, which was uh, published. Um, all right, so um, uh, let's let's just start with a very general introduction. So uh, uh, the power exclusion principle. Well, of course, we all know that in uh, this is how it was formulated for the first time in uh, 1925. So if in an atom, uh, sorry, in an atom there cannot be two or more equivalent electrons for which the values of all four quantum numbers coincide. And of course, if an electron exists in an atom with these numbers, then the state is occupied. So no, no surprise. We all learned that in university, in school. Um, this is what something I, I find nice. Always uh, uh, put in the in the first slides. Uh, this is a letter of Pauli uh, to his friend Fields, and so he kind of hints to uh, like. Um, uh, some uh, philosophical uh, origin of the power exclusion principle, uh, even from Leibniz in the, what, he, what he called the principle of the indiscernibility of the uh, identical. Going back to the second slide. Um, yeah, despite the success uh, in his uh, Nobel lecture in 1945, he said that the impression uh, that the shadow was some, some inc incompleteness uh, is falling on the on the on the bright light of the success uh, of the new well, but the new quantum mechanics. All right. So uh, with this with this in mind, with this introduction, uh, um, right. So uh, we can we can go a bit farther, which is the uh, the connection uh, with the spin statistic theorem, and of course this is also something we learn in in, in school. Well, uh, very briefly, uh, half integral spin particles, they follow anti-symmetric wave function and uh, certain Fermi Dirac statistics. And if they have integral uh, spin, they ha have uh, uh, both statistics. So this is nothing, nothing really new. Um, something which is, uh, I find interesting was demonstrated uh, by Ludels and Zumino that the uh, spin statistics uh, connection lie, lays on uh, very few uh, general assumptions. And these are uh, Lorentz Poincare symmetry, CPT, unitarity, locality, and causality. Well, of course, then it uh, fell into the mind of, for, for example, Greenberg in this, in this article here, that uh, everything which, uh, which uh, embeds, uh, for example, the variation of CPT, locality, as we say, Lorentz invariance, but even more exotic scenarios such as extra space dimensions, uh, discrete space time, or non commutative space time, they motivate uh, an effect on the uh, on the violation, violation of the power exclusion principle. And so this is something I like to, to imagine, which is, um, uh, is showing this picture, an iceberg, which is shaped as a cat, okay? So everything which is uh, above the, the water <laughs> represents <laughs> represents the uh, above the water represents the standard model or the classical or standard quantum uh, quantum theory. And so below water, you could find maybe something uh, something different. So we spoke Susie a bit after lunch, uh, dark energy, quantum gravity, extra space dimension strings could be everything which is unknown can be under the water. And what is interesting, what I find interesting that, uh, so the theories which embed uh, all of these ones, which embed extra dimensions, which I, I just said before, uh, non-commutative or discrete space time, for example, can have an effect on the power exclusion principle, which is now shown here at the tail of the cat. Okay, uh, so, so far so good, but how do we model actually uh, power exclusion principle violation. Well, uh, this is a formulation which is really used in experiment experiments, uh, which is the uh, simple uh, Fermi oscillation with the third state 
uh, as, as shown by Ignatieva Kutzmin, well, this is nothing uh, really hard. You have two allowed states and uh, a forbidden one, which is connected with, with a beta parameter. The beta parameter really quantifies the degree of violation in the transition. And this is something maybe you, uh, you can keep in mind. So this beta will, will show up uh, as a probability uh, of, uh, of uh, as an up, upper limit on the poly exclusion principle. And of course, there are also uh, other model of the uh, uh, PP uh, violations, for example, this uh, from Greenberg and Moapadra um, uh, with a Q parameter, which informs the anti commutators or in the, on the model of uh, Rael and Kampa. Uh, what is uh, uh, important to note, I think, is that the, all these models here, they respect the Messiah Greenberg super selection rule. Uh, this is an important rule, which I'm, I'm, I'm showing here in a, in a pictorial, pictorial way. So the, the statement of the rule is simple. Uh, superposition of states which have a different symmetry are not allowed. So it means that uh, transition probability between two symmetry states is zero. Uh, in, in, uh, in practice, what does it mean? Well, if you have a closed system uh, where uh, you have a, a certain state, then this cannot, cannot happen. So in a closed system, you cannot, you cannot have a PP violation in this case. Um, while uh, in the open system, when you add another state from the outside, then this can happen. So this kind of discriminates the, for example, the VIP2 experiments uh, from experiments which are looking at closed system, which like uh, stability of the matter. Okay, and so experimentally, how this is done? Well, uh, you introduce a current in a target and you look for an anomalous X-ray, which is originating from a poly exclusion principle violation. So in this schematic here, you see a normal uh, 2P to 1S transition. Uh, the second state here on the N equals one is free. So which means the uh, one electron can perform this transition. And in copper, which is the target we use in, uh, in our experiment, uh, this happened uh, at energy of uh, 8.05 keV. And on the right here instead, uh, this is uh, showing a situation where the N equals, equals one is actually already occupied by two. So uh, uh, two P to one S transition is, uh, if it happens, then violates the, uh, the power exclusion principle. And very importantly to note is that since there is an additional electron with respect to the classical, let's call it classical transition, then of course the shielding provided by uh, the, uh, the additional electron modifies the energy of the transition. So uh, you would not uh, find uh, 8.05 keV in copper as in the normal transition, but this energy is modified and it's shifted by some uh, hundreds of EV and it goes to 7.7. .7. All right. So uh, with these settings, then the experiment is pretty much done in principle. What you do, you can see on the schematics. So you have a, a copper strip, you circulate um, <laughs> current. This is of course, as I said, to avoid the constraints by the, uh, the super selection rule. And you, well, you wait for a uh, uh, pile exclusion principle violation like this one I showed on the, on the right to happen inside the strip. You have uh, some nice X-ray detect detectors. And what you see, this is uh, kind of showing what you what, what it would like. Uh, you would see the uh, uh, spectrospo spectroscopic uh, uh, 2P uh, to 1S transition here at uh, 8.05 keV. But if the current is circulating and if the uh, uh, PEP is also violated, you will, you will expect to see at 7.7 uh, another line, which has an amplitude proportional to the square of the uh, beta parameter we, we saw uh, earlier. And what, what, what you can do, of course, you also take data without current so that you see it uh, to have real, con real control on your on your data, and this was um, 
uh, implemented in the in the deep experiment, um, which had uh, ultra ultra pure copper uh, foil. There were at the time uh, 16 CCDs, and everything was cooled. And here you can see uh, um, a section of the experiment. And uh, this is not super visible, but uh, it's the uh, the subtraction of the two spectra. So if there was a um, a violation, you would see you would see here a signal. Uh, since no signal was seen, uh, the uh, the upper limit on the beta square uh, parameter was set to um, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 29. And this is uh, actually the goal of the VIP2 experiment, so the successor of VIP, is to improve this result of the VIP experiment uh, by two orders of magnitude. Okay, and so how does it look like? Well, uh, there was a quite of an upgrade, and now instead of these silicon drift detectors, which have higher resolution, uh, they are faster uh, triggerable, uh, are now used, and uh, this is shown here, for example, one picture of one SED, um, uh, and on the above, picture above, uh, you can see, for example, how they are placed around the copper target. This is a this is a, a front and side view of the of the experiment, and this is also an image showing the details of the SED. Um, also. Uh, the uh, target was optimized in geometry to have higher global efficiency of detection. Um, also important to note the uh, current was increased. So this was really, uh, really necessary to, to achieve the, the, uh, the scientific goal of this tool. And these are more drawings. All right, so where is it sitting? Well, so, uh, um, uh, in, in, I don't know if you can see, yeah, uh, in between these two holes in the uh, uh, Grand Sasso National Laboratories, uh, we have our barracks. This is a photo of the inside where it was uh, 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 in process, the building of the shielding. Of course, you have uh, 1,400 meters of rock co covering the, the experiment. So the cosmic radiation is quite reduced, but you still want to uh, to protect your experiment from environmental radiation, from everything which comes from outside. So uh, for that reason, uh, passive shielding of two layers, copper and lead was, was added. And this is also another schematic of the experiment. Okay, so uh, finally, then you operate the uh, experiment for six months and you, you get your data. Okay, what does it look like? So this is a spectrum. Uh, recently published in symmetry, where you can see the uh, copper K alpha line. Uh, this one is not even <laughs> the power exclusion principle validation, but it's the nickel. Um, every time I show this picture, people say, ah, okay, no, this is, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> but actually the, the power exclusion principle violation at 7.7, it's about right here. So, um, and then uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't say you can see something, but of course uh, statistical analysis is performed to assess the degree of uh, the exclusion. Okay, uh, so just briefly, uh, you as, as I just said, you describe the spectrum with current. Uh, this uh, uh, red, uh, blue one um, with nickel, uh, copper and you add a signal, uh, so a Gaussian uh, distribution with the amplitude proportional to this signal. Uh, all right, so uh, these details, I uh, don't go much into details because there is also another talk tomorrow uh, from uh, Alessio. And so just, just to, to briefly go, we, uh, we have a combined likelihood with uh, uh, the uh, data with current, the data without current, and we actually perform a two-fold analysis at Bayesian and Frequentist, um, where in both cases we use uh, penalty terms in case of a Frequentist 
uh, analysis for the experimental uncertainties and for the Bayesian, uh, these are encoded as priors. So this, I don't, I don't really go into details, as I said, uh, the talk is actually tomorrow, so. Okay, and I just jumped to the uh, results. So on the left, you see the marginalized probability. Uh, and from here, you can, you can obtain the 90% interval, which corresponds to uh, beta, uh, beta square alpha of 8.6, uh, 10 to the minus 31 for, for this case. Uh, frequencies, uh, which is shown here with the uh, CLS method, uh, the observed exclusion limit uh, is around 8.9. So a bit more conservative uh, as expected by frequencies approaches. And um, uh, also this will be, uh, will be explained and how to go from, uh, from the number of events which are excluded to the beta square. This also will be uh, the subject of the uh, Alessio's talk. And so I also want to add that there is a new article in preparation with all the available statistics so far. Okay. But we are not quite happy with what we got because we uh, want to, uh, to investigate even more the power exclusion principle and to upgrade our experiment to the VIP3. Um, so why and what do you want to do with that? You, you can ask, well, of course, uh, something which is very interesting to do is to scan the, uh, the path violation probability as a function of the energy. So, and then the, of the, uh, of the Z of the target. And this is also something I, I always report here, the a letter from Ocum, which says that, of course, one should uh, not stop uh, testing the power exclusion principle, but indeed uh, extend the, the test to, to all the, if possible, <laughs> the entire periodic table. Um, right, so uh, what does it look like? Uh, so this is a schematic of the uh, new vacuum chamber. So you see it has a, a space for an increased number of STDs uh, and a much better geometrical efficiency. The current can circulate up to 400 amperes. Um, uh, also the thermal context uh, and yes, uh, between the cold fingers and the STDs is better. So it means you can cool better. You can have a better handle on your detector um, together with a new cooling system. Um, of course, what happens is that if you have transition from I Z, then the X-rays will be so energetic that at some point uh, you won't contain them within the STDs. So this motivates uh, the uh, the need of uh, one millimeter thick as this, which are I will show uh, as lay, as light uh, after this one. Um, but here, just to appreciate the quantum efficiency uh, as a function and the energy for uh, for different uh, thickness of this. So uh, you see that uh, after a certain um, a certain point, your efficiency starts dropping. So for one uh, millimeter thick as this, this is mitigated and it allows you to arrive to, to higher energy in, uh, and therefore to test uh, higher Z materials. So these are some pictures of the uh, SDs, which is uh, in production with the FBK and Polytechnic de Milano. Um, this picture shows really the uh, field uh, density inside the uh, semiconductor and it is uh, not only thicker, it also has improved uh, charge collection at the border of the active area. Um, it is wider, and this is something very nice because it means you have a higher global efficiency collection, and, and then also has reduced uh, charge sharing, uh, uh, which is done with a focusing electrode. So this is really something cool, uh, which uh, will, will happen in V3. And okay, so uh, I want just then <laughs> to, uh, to go a bit more to a new, a new paradigm uh, for VIP uh, about so the quantum gravity. This is an old <laughs> uh, abstract of an article uh, from uh, Andrea and Antonino, uh, the, uh, um, the possibility of using the VIP2 as a crash test for non-commutative quantum gravity we'll see 
later uh, the newest uh, uh, article which has been published. Um, so going back to to I find uh, going back to this to this picture of the iceberg uh, shaped as cat, um, and of course uh, something we uh, just now we we managed to achieve is to connect uh, the power exclusion principle with quantum gravity, and uh, so uh, so this is also uh, something a bit more generic. Um, yeah, so quantum gravity models can embed embed uh, PP violation. And of course, PEP, we, we say that is a consequence of spin statistic theorem. And since this uh, few uh, generic assumption can be uh, deeply related to the variation of the space and time, if you have a non-commutativity, non uh, which is sometimes common in uh, quantum gravity, for example, uh, uh, kappa, theta, poncare, then the uh, non-commutativity will induce Will encode a violation of the Pauli exclusion principle. And this, of course, means you do not have to worry in this case uh, of the Messiah Greenberg super, super uh, selection rule. And uh, so the uh, at lower energy, the uh, violation is suppressed with this, with this uh, square of theta uh, as function of the energy, uh, which is the energy of the uh, characteristic transition. And lambda is also the, the parameter you want to, uh, to exclude. It's a scale of the, uh, of the, sc the scale of the space-time non commutative emergence. OK, uh, so and specific calculation of the atomic levels for the theta point carré. This is the, the transition probability uh, is expressed as a function of the energies uh, for the non-vanishing and vanishing electric uh, components of the theta tensor, which uh, can be made a connection with the Q1 algebra, but of course this time depends on uh, an energy. Uh, so what, what you can do then experimentally is to, uh, to investigate uh, atomic transition. And if you do that, you can translate the, the bounds on the, uh, on, the, on the transition, pro on the forbidden transi transition processes to a, to a bound on the new physics scale a lambda for the two different choice of the components. And this is done uh, with a, a high purity germanium detector. Uh, and this is a high purity coaxial P type germanium, uh, HPGA for the friends, uh, uh, eight, eight centimeter in diameter and length. Uh, it has uh, an active inactive layer of lithium doped germanium. Uh, this is a schematic of the, of the detector, um, also sitting there in the Grand Sasso National Laboratory. Um, it, is, uh, um, uh, it uses uh, radio pure Roman lead uh, as target mat material, which is completely surrounding the detector. And as, as uh, for VIP, there is also a passive shielding uh, of electrolytic copper and lead outside. Um, uh, of course, uh, polyethylene plates to reduce the uh, neutron flux. Uh, everything is shielded uh, and uh, uh, with a cryostat uh, to avoid the contamination of, uh, of radon. Okay, and this is a more picture of the um, of the detector, how it looks like uh, inside its case, uh, its shielding um, with all the components. All right, so. Um, let me just jump to the, to the results. Uh, this here you see is the, uh, the spectrum which is acquired uh, in the region of interest. Um, what you would expect is the uh, pure background and in, in pink and in green, the signal from the volatility transition in LED is overlaid in, uh, in green. Okay, and of course, uh, this is the first uh, analysis which accounts for the predicted energy dependence of the uh, PP evaluation probability. For example, for the uh, expected rate of the K-alpha-1 transition, this is given here. And you can translate, as we, as we said, uh, to this lambda parameter uh, from the number of events which you don't see uh, coming from this uh, uh, transition. Um, okay, so this more results 
uh, this is the again the margin, marginalized posterior. Um, uh, this is the two-dimensional posterior uh, of the back, uh, background and signal. Uh, so uh, since uh, there is no evidence of uh, of this kind of signal, one can put 90% probability exclusion uh, limit, which uh, this was, was shown before. Uh, Antonino uh, translates to uh, a limit a limit on lambda in in unit of Planck scales. And this is, has been accepted in PRL and also very <laughs> very recent news. Yesterday, uh, this was published. Uh, so congratulations again to uh, Christian, Andrea Antonino, uh, which are the main authors <laughs> of this article. And yeah, so just to conclude, uh, yeah, so uh, we have this nice experiment at Gran Sasso, uh, which is uh, still taking data and pushing the limit on the power exclusion principle violation. Of course, as I showed for the uh, uh, cut uh, iceberg uh, picture. Uh, you 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 have many motivations of uh, PEP violation from beyond standard model scenarios, and this is this may makes it really important to keep looking for for possible violations. And so this is what we are doing, and with the V two experiment under the uh, Messier Greenberg selection rule, we have the strongest limits. Uh, uh, article uh, with the full statistics we have in hand with our data is in preparation, so keep uh, keep tuned for that. Uh, and finally, uh, congrats again to the uh, to the main authors for the Pirel, um, which is the first uh, quantum gravity model uh, uh, motivated PP violation. Okay, so. Um, um, I thank you for a uh, lot for the attention and if you have